So in this video, we're going to talk more about the MOS capacitor. And we're going to talk about its different modes of operation. In this video, we're going to talk about its accumulation mode, um, why it's called accumulation uh, instead of something else will hopefully become clear shortly. So we said in the last video that we've got this uh, MOS capacitor type structure, which is kind of a sandwich. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, how did I draw it in the preview? So in this video, we're going to more, talk more about the MOS capacitor. And specifically, we're going to talk about what it looks like in accumulation mode, uh, what accumulation mode is and why it is we care. Um, so we said in the last video, we've got this MOS capacitor structure that we're dealing with. So we've got the metal on top. Uh, so the metal, and this is what we actually apply a voltage to. Um, we've got this thin layer of oxide, so metal. Uh, we've got this thin layer of insulating oxide that prevents current from flowing directly through the, through the gate to the semiconductor. So metal, oxide. And then we've got the semiconductor. The semiconductor. And we said, let's assume that the semiconductor is grounded for now. So we, any, any voltage we apply up top is going to be uh, just that. Uh, what, it's going to behave like we would expect. So we said in the last video that this structure behaves like a capacitor in that if I apply some positive voltage, uh, or let's say I apply some negative voltage to this, uh, this terminal, we get a bunch of electrons that accumulate on the metal and we get a bunch of holes that accumulate near the edge of the semiconductor. And let's say that this is a uh, p-type uh, p-type semiconductor. Um, if we apply a negative voltage, so let's say v is equal to I don't know negative one volt, um, then we'll probably get some electrons on this metal side and some holes on this positive side. And we call this mode of operation accumulation. Uh, so this is accumulation. And the reason it's accumulation is because we're taking the majority carriers out of the semiconductor uh, and we're bringing them close to the interface because this is acting like a capacitor. So near the interface, we are accumulating holes. In other words, the number of holes at this interface, at the interface between the semiconductor and the metal, is getting higher. So the concentration of holes very near this edge is actually higher than it is in the bulk semiconductor. So that's accumulation. And now you might say, the next natural question is, well, um, that's all fine and good, but what voltage do I need to apply? Um, what voltage? And the intuitive answer was, well, it's probably going to be a negative voltage, right? Because we want electrons to be uh, to be put at the metal, and we want holes to be attracted to the semiconductor. So we want to apply a negative voltage to the metal. Uh, and that's true. But if we want a more precise answer, in other words, how much negative voltage do we need to apply? then we need to ask the band diagram. So if we draw the band diagram of just the semiconductor for now, um, we know that it's going to look something like this. Uh, so it's got a conduction band and a valence band. And since it's a p-type semiconductor, the Fermi level is near the valence band. So this is our Fermi level. This is our intrinsic Fermi energy. And if we want it to go, if we want this band diagram to have more holes. Uh, so let's say that this is the edge. So this is the oxide semiconductor interface, and this is far away into the semiconductor. Uh, we expect far away things are gonna look roughly the same because you know it's a it's a big semiconductor. Um, but near the oxide, we want the semiconductor to look more p-type. In other words, we want the band diagram to bend like this. We want it to kind of bend upwards so that the Fermi level is much closer to the valence band. So if we were to just draw uh, what we wanted this to look like at the interface, uh, so we've got our conduction band, our valence band, 
and our intrinsic Fermi energy at the interface we want we want the Fermi energy to be very very close uh, to the valence band because this means we have more holes so we've got more holes near the interface and so I've just kind of zoomed in on this edge uh, to, to give you this band diagram and what it would look like and yeah it would be sloped but I uh, just ignore that for now the the basic idea is that we want the uh, the Fermi energy EF to be much closer to the valence band energy so that we that means we have more holes in the semiconductor and so let me just uh, erase this this old band diagram so this is what we want it to look like so how do we get the semiconductor to bend well that's that's red uh, how do we get the semiconductor to bend how we want rather than how the semiconductor just bends by itself well we know that at equilibrium um, if this is our metal this is our oxide uh, and this is our semiconductor the band diagram is going to look something like this and I'm going to not draw the vacuum level just for simplicity but we know we're going to get a certain amount of band bending. So we know we're going to get a certain amount of band bending. And we know the band bending of the oxide plus the band bending in the semiconductor is just equal to phi ms. So phi ms is the total amount of band bending. And that's if you neglect the interface charge which I have because it's makes things much more complicated um, unnecessarily so at this point and phi ms is just equal to uh, as we said before the the metal work function uh, minus the silicon work function and phi s is equal to just for completeness uh, the electron affinity of the silicon plus the difference between the conduction band and the Fermi level and in a previous video I actually made an error I didn't include this term uh, but visually you can see that that's that's necessary um, from the from the previous video so right now we know that this is a p-type semiconductor so there's some holes floating around but at the interface we see that the Fermi level is actually closer to the intrinsic Fermi energy and that's not what we want uh, there's actually fewer holes uh, right now there's fewer holes near the interface and there's more holes in the semiconductor so we need to undo this band bending uh, we need to undo the intrinsic band bending of the semiconductor the intrinsic band bending Of the semiconductor and we know that this is due to the difference uh, the total amount of band bending phi ms so in order to undo this band bending we need to apply a voltage but what voltage do we need to apply and where do we need to apply it um well if we want to drag these bands down so we want to move the fermi level further away from the intrinsic fermi energy then we know we want to apply a positive voltage to the semiconductor and that's because this is the the band diagrams are drawn in terms of electron energy which is minus qv so it's annoying um voltage it works the opposite way you'd expect um so we need to we need to apply a positive voltage to the semiconductor side or a negative voltage to the metal side and if we apply a negative voltage equal in magnitude to phi ms then we're going to undo uh, the intrinsic band bending of the semiconductor and that's great that's exactly what we wanted so if we redraw things uh, now we've got the Fermi level of the um, of the metal the Fermi level of the silicon our conduction band and our valence band oh sorry uh, intrinsic uh, intrinsic energy I uh, got ahead of, got a little ahead of myself um, and if we've successfully undone things uh, the Fermi level should be down here so exactly where we'd expect for bulk silicon so now there's a difference in the Fermi levels and the difference is just equal to the voltage that we applied that's kind of cool but the cooler part is that the band is now straight so uh, we can now tweak it as we want and we said that we wanted uh, the intrinsic energy 
to bend up like this, the conduction band to bend up like this, and the valence band to bend up like this. So at the interface, it looks more p-type. So it looks more p-type. And so how do we do this? Well, we apply even more voltage. So we apply even more positive voltage to the semiconductor and even more negative voltage to the gate. And so in, and so that's how much voltage we need to apply. We need to apply a voltage, uh, a negative voltage that's greater in magnitude than phi ms. So we need to apply a negative voltage that's greater in magnitude than phi ms, and this will put us in accumulation mode. Now this was implicitly assuming that uh, there was a certain that phi ms was positive, right? So that the there was a certain directionality to the band bending, the intrinsic band bending. But if that were different, if we used a different metal, for example, the intrinsic band bending might be going the opposite direction. And in that case, we might not want to undo it. Uh, we might already be in accumulation mode. So depending on the metal that you use and the semiconductor that you have, uh, you may uh, you have to actually look at the band structure and say, OK, how do I want to change it? So how do I want to change the band structure? And you might want to undo uh, the intrinsic bending, or you might want to help it. Uh, you might want to make it even more um, uh, aggressive, if you will. And if you want to add the signs back in, then if you apply a voltage equal to the signed value of phi ms, then you will undo the band bending. And if you apply an even more negative voltage, an even more negative voltage, uh, if it's a p-type semiconductor, you will go into accumulation. So if you have questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.